All right, let's make a CFG for this language, which is the union of two languages, where L1 is the set of all strings, 0 to the n, 1 to the n, 2 to the m, 3 to the m, and L2 is the set of all strings, 0 to the n, 1 to the m, 2 to the m, 3 to the n. So how do you make a CFG for the union? Well, note that for L1, we have adjacent uh, runs of zeros and ones which have the same number and right next to those we have twos and threes having the same number but there's no relation between n and m here so n and m can be anything but as long as we have the same number of zeros and ones at the beginning and then same number of twos and threes at the end we can actually uh, show that this is context-free. So another way to do this is to show that L1 and L2 are CFLs. So if I show that both of them are CFLs, then if I want to get the union of the two, well, I just use closure under union to show that the result is a CFL and we know how to make a CFG for the union. And for the second language, well, the ends are at the front and the end of the string and the m's are adjacent to each other and again in this case n and m do not have any relation to each other they can be anything they want so let's make a cfg for l1 well let's see well that means that i gotta be able to produce zero to the n one to the n and we know how to do that well that's just s goes to 0, s1, or empty. But how do we make this so that this works with 2s and 3s afterward? So if I make an additional copy of this, let's just change the variable up. Well, I got to be able to make 0 to the m, uh, sorry, 2 to the m, th 3 to the m, and the a variable by itself can make that. Well, if I want the language L1, well, that's just the concatenation of the two variables. So if I take this, move it down, and add a variable, let's just call it um, x, which goes to s a, well, whatever it makes, it must be of the form 0 to the n, 1 to the n, because that's what the s variable makes. And um, concatenated with that is 2 to the m, 3 to the m, which is what the a variable makes. And notice, because it's a context-free grammar, it doesn't matter what the number of zeros and ones are compared to the number of twos and threes because they have, they're, they're corresponding to two different occurrences of variables. So then, for that reason, let's make a CFG for L2. Well, we can do the same idea. I'm going to change the variable names here. So let's just call this S1, A1 so that we know which one's which, and I'm going to call the starting variable x1. And then for L2, well, we know uh, this is slightly different. Well, we, I need to be able to make 1 to the m, 2 to the m. So let's uh, have s2 make 1, s2, 2, or empty. So that makes 1 to the m, 2 to the m. But then we got to be able to make uh, 0 to the m, 3 to the m. But you can think of S2 as the middle of the string. As once we make the zeros and threes, then we need to move inside and make the ones and twos. So we can accomplish this by having a variable A2 make 0, A2, 3. So that makes 0 to the n, 3 to the n. But then once we're done making those, notice that the A2 variable is inside, it's in the middle. So when we're done making zeros and threes, we gotta go inside and start making the ones and twos. Well, S2 knows how to make that. So when we're done, we need to be able to go inside to S2, the S2 variable. And that's all we need because, well, the A2 variable is right at the very beginning. So what we can do then is just put or empty at the end. Pretty cool. So then, if we want a CFG for the union, well, and so here we're saying that this is the start 
variable, and this one is the start variable. So then if I want a CFG for L1 union L2, what we would want to do is to have a brand new start variable I'm going to call S0. So this is the start variable in this grammar. And that goes to, well, the start one for L1 or the start variable for L2. So that's X1 or, well, let's see, A2. So then here, let's copy all of the rules for L1. This grammar, let's copy those in. And let's copy all of the rules and variables for L2 in as well. And I, I made sure to have different variable names for the two grammars so that when I copied and pasted these in, we didn't have a conflict. So like the A variable on one side is not the same as the A variable on the other side. So that is a quick and easy context-free grammar for the union of these two context-free languages.